Approximately one million years ago, Mauna Kea rose out of the Pacific Ocean, created by the same volcanic forces that formed all of the Hawaiian Islands. During a classic shield volcano stage, flows of dense basaltic lava formed most of the mountain. About 65,000 years ago, Mauna Kea entered its post-shield stage, erupting lighter materials and covering much of the basalt with a layer of cinders. During this later period, Mauna Kea's distinctive pu'u, or cinder cones, were formed. With the last eruptions only 4,500 years old, the volcano is considered to be dormant, but not extinct. Sitting on this unique natural treasure is the Mauna Kea Science Reserve. The Science Reserve includes the 525-acre astronomy precinct and borders the Mauna Kea Ice Age Natural Area Reserve. Yes, there were glaciers in Hawaii. Geologists believe the summit was covered by sheets of ice, sometimes several hundred feet thick. Beneath the glaciers, volcanic eruptions continued, and under intense pressure, the lava cooled to produce extremely dense basalt, later prized for stone tools. Polished rock surfaces and striated grooves marked the path of ice flows. Left behind were crushed rocks and the glacial till that make up much of the summit's surface materials. Where the ice flows ended are glacial moraines, rock debris deposited by melting glaciers. Pu'u Waiau was formed under a glacier. The lake inside can hold water because the volcanic eruptions left a layer of denser clay on the bottom. And the glacial meltwater helped to carve Mauna Kea's distinctive gulches. One of the largest is Pohakuloa Gulch. Even today, Mauna Kea's face is constantly changing, being eroded by high winds, snowstorms, and rainwater. Mauna Kea actually sits on the ocean floor, measuring over 15,000 feet below sea level and nearly 14,000 feet above, it is the world's largest mountain mass. On it is nearly every type of climate zone, from tropical beaches to rainforests to a frigid alpine desert. Mauna Kea's fragile ecosystems evolved without grazing animals and few predators. Many native species are struggling to survive without natural protection against invasive competitors. Seafaring Polynesians introduced domestic animals and new plants. Then Westerners brought cattle ranching and sheep to the area. Koa trees were cleared for pasture land and escaped animals decimated the native forests. On Mauna Kea today, there are ongoing efforts to restore the mountain's natural environments. Below the science reserve, on Mauna Kea's lower slopes are pockets of indigenous trees, such as majestic koa, sandalwood, and nayo. Here, avian life thrives, including several species of forest birds. Native Hawaiians revered these mountain forests and performed rituals before the gathering of plants for medicines, trees for canoes, and other important resources. Higher up is the subalpine forest, encircling the mountain between 7,000 and 9,500 feet. Here you'll find the visitor information station, surrounded by mamane trees. Once overgrazed, the mamane forest grew healthier after wild goat and feral sheep populations were controlled. The palila bird, an endangered honeycreeper, is found in the wild only on Mauna Kea and is specifically adapted to a diet of mamane seeds. The most common native bird in this area is the amakihi, which has a more varied diet than the palila. More rare is the nene, or Hawaiian goose, with its web feet adapted to lava fields. Also found in this area are hoary bats, Hawaii's only endemic species of land mammal. Native grasses provide most of the ground cover, with other native plants such as mints and various shrubs. 
Above the Mamane forest is the alpine shrubland. Generally between the tree line and 11,000 feet elevation, this region is above Hale Pohaku. The larger native plants include Hinahina, a native geranium known for its silvery color, and Pukiave. Ohelo berries also grow on the rocky soil. The Mauna Kea silver sword was once plentiful up here and on lower slopes. Wild cattle and other animals grazed on the delicate silver swords nearly to extinction. When a few silver swords were discovered on Waipahoehoe's sheer cliffs, seeds were gathered, sown in greenhouses, and replanted. Most of the science reserve is in the Alpine Summit region, a harsh aeolian desert where strong winds support life in this high altitude environment. Seeming barren at first glance, the summit actually is home to a variety of living things. In the loose cinder substrate are vecu, mysterious flightless bugs that survive on lowland insects caught in the updrafts. Snowdrifts serve as their icebox, preserving the insects for future meals. Discovered in 1979, little is known about the vecu bug, but ethnomologists continue to study its habitat and life cycle. In the rocky areas with basalt substrate, mosses and lichens find moisture under rocks and shady outcroppings. In the crevices cling ferns and a few bunch grasses. Here, animal life consists mostly of moths, bugs, and spiders. And the wolf spider hiding in the rocks is a voracious predator. You've just seen some of Mauna Kea's remarkable flora and fauna and the incredible landscapes they live in. These treasures are fragile and precious. With the local community, we are working to protect the summit area and find a balance with cultural, scientific, and educational needs. Every visitor can help us to achieve that mission, to care for and preserve Mauna Kea's amazing natural environments.